So in today's video review, we are going to be reviewing the Energy Kodiak. It is a solar generator capable of producing over a kilowatt hour of power, and it's a lithium ion solar generator. You can hook up more solar panels than any other solar generator on the market, and I've been using it for a few weeks. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the functionality, what you can and can't use it for, and value, and how it compares to other solar generators on the market. So it's pretty simple, really. It's a big steel box, and on this side, we have input and on this side we have output and you have a couple options for charging the Kodiak's battery and you can expand the battery with these two terminals you can add lead acid batteries and this is a feature that no other solar generator can do and you can use any 12 volt or you can use 6 volt in series and connect them to this and the Kodiak will charge them and discharge them whenever it needs power and then we have two plugs for charging it this plug is for high current and this one's for low current. Power goes through any one of these, this blue light turns on and you know that it's charging. This one can handle 600 watts of solar power. This one can handle 240 watts. But keep in mind that it can only charge from one port at a time. This plug port can handle a 5525 plug and you can make your own or you can buy it online. And this plug works with cables supplied by Energy and they have very robust, nice cables and we're gonna go over that in a second. And you can see that there's a cooling fan right here and there is a bear, a grizzly bear and it's etched in. It's really nice, high quality. On this side, we have the output. And to use anything on the Kodiak, you only have one button. And this button turns it on. And you have a battery indicator right here. And then you have a small LED screen. And it tells you the volts on the top right and the amps on the top left being used from the battery currently. And then it gives you a watt readout. So however many watts you are using from anything right here, it tells you. So if I plug in a hairdryer that's rated for 500 watts, it should say 500 watts right here. We have nothing plugged in right now, so it uses about 14 watts because the inverter is on. Also keep in mind that these are always live, the cigarette lighter adapters and these plugs. But in order to have the inverter on and the USB plugs, you need to turn it on whenever you need to use them. At the very end, we also have an RV port or an RV and plug it directly into the Kodiak. And on this side, we have two cooling fans and they come on if you use the inverter for a long time. In the back, there is nothing there. And if we lift it up, you will see that there's rubber feet. So let's just talk for a second, the size and the weight. This takes nothing to lift for me. This is tiny, it is small, and it fits in my minivan, okay? My RV's battery bank that was over 200 pounds was like this, VMAX lead acid batteries. I liked them, it had 310 amp hours total, but it only had the same usable watt rating as this, because you can use 100% of this, but the lead acids you can use 30% to up to 50%, but you don't wanna do that that much. Also, the lead acids get about 500 charge cycles. This gets 2,000, charge cycles plus. If you do partial discharges, you could easily get 5,000. It is comparable to a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is great. It's because of the charge circuitry and how much they top off the batteries. It's probably not charging or balancing up to 4.2 volts per cell. And it's probably doing four or 4.1. And that's how they're getting, getting the rated charge cycle life out of these batteries. But I mean, look at this. You just buy this little box and you plug in the solar panels and you can power a microwave. You can power, you can power all sorts of stuff. You can, it's super durable. Like everything is strong on this thing. You can tell that it's well made. This is what the Kodiak looks like when it's all plugged in. We have AC outlets on this side. It's on right now, so that means my lights are on. And then on this side, we have the charge input. So this one is the solar charge input cable and it's high quality, very thick, really, really cool plug i mean this thing is huge it's feels like high quality and when you plug it in and there's power from the solar panels this charge indicator light turns on this is another thing that i rigged up this is a little wire that plugs into the low wattage charge input port and this goes up to an xt60 connector and then goes to a cigarette lighter adapter because when i drive this one can give off 120 watts and i want to charge while i drive mainly during the winter this one has 200 watts of solar panel coming in also, you can see down here, these are the MC4 connectors. And like I said, high quality stuff. It is well made. Look how thick this cable is. If you have in a big alternator or a place where you can do more than 120 watts, Energy also sells this cable. And this plugs into a cigarette lighter adapter. 
and it's really thick and it can handle 240 watts. So if you use this really nice thick cable, make sure that you have a big enough alternator and that your charging system can actually handle it in your car. So when this is on, that means that every plug is live. But when you turn it off, only the cigarette lighter adapter and these plugs are alive. Also, this screen is on only when there is electricity going through this from the solar panels or you have the inverter on. So if you turn this off and you disconnect the solar panels, the screen goes off. But if you plug this in, the screen comes on. If you have nothing plugged in and you turn the inverter on, the screen will come on again. But just to give you an idea of how it works. Also, if you want to reset these little numbers, all of the data points, you just simply press it on and off. Now we're going to load test the Kodiak. A lot of people that do load tests on lithium ion generators will make sure that all of the cells are balanced, charged, and completely topped up at their total voltage. And they'll make sure that the battery pack is nice and cold. I've been using it until the battery is halfway. So this is going to be a real world test. The batteries are also warm right now. They're not excessively cold. So the discharge rate will be slightly different, but I want you guys to see what the real world test is actually like. All right, so right now the Kodiak is pulling 1,270 watts with just this microwave, but this is a real world test. Let's add some more stuff to it. So first we're gonna turn on this fan. And then we're going to plug in my laptop, which uses quite a significant amount. So let's plug it in. And we've got the phone in, and the voltage has dropped to 10, and the wattage is at 1300. And we put it on 10 minutes, so let's see how long it can take that load for. thing turn back on again and the fan is on overdrive mode you can hear it lots of hot air coming here it's pretty warm but the fact that it cannot power continuously 1300 watts is the biggest downside to this it is rated on the website for 1500 watts continuous and I'm trying to pull a 1300 watt load it shows on the LCD screen that's 1300 watts and it cuts off after four and a half minutes so if the battery was instead full to 100% capacity you could do this for about 10 minutes until it bonks out but when I do this test at 50% capacity with lower voltage, it bonks out at only four and a half minutes. I don't think that's cool. If you plan to run a load that is over a thousand watts continuously, make sure that you're not going to do so for over 10 minutes or so. I bet you could pull a thousand watt load solid for 30 minutes, no problem, to an hour possibly. But then at that point, I don't think anybody buying this with only a kilowatt hour of power would actually use that. I don't think they would ever have the inverter on that long. Another thing that I dislike about the Kodiak specifically is the USB. In order for the USB to be on or to charge your devices, the inverter needs to be on. So that means that this needs to be lit up. So if you want to charge up your phone, you're also wasting a lot of electricity keeping the inverter on. And a lot of people just want to plug their phone in overnight and leave it and let it be. So I think that they need to find a way to make this always live or have an extra switch. That's the cool thing about the Kodiak though is there's only one switch and people like that. It's easy to use. But oh man, it would be nice to have a second switch just for these USBs. There is a workaround for this because the cigarette lighter adapters and these two plugs that are 12 volts, these are always on. These are live because this is the same voltage as the battery's voltage. So there's no converter or inverter that these need to go through. So the workaround is simply put a USB charger into one of the cigarette lighter sockets and you will always have USB power. So let's talk about charge efficiency. If you plug in some solar panels, are you getting all of that electricity? Most of the time when you hook up solar panels to a battery bank, you lose some through the solar charge controller.
And with pulse width modulation controllers, you lose 30 to 20%. If you have an MPPT, it's about three to 5%. This does not have an MPPT, but it has a switching regulator. And the, the charge efficiency is 99.5%. So whether you have MPPT or not, it doesn't matter because this is so efficient, but you're not going to have the amp boost that MPPT is so notorious for. So in the morning, you are not going to have as much um, benefits with wire loss, but if you have the proper gauge wire or you are using the supplied cables, you don't really have to worry about that. So charge efficiency is very high. If you have AC input on the other hand, the charge efficiency is lower and the power supply gets very hot. But if you're plugged into a wall, it's not gonna matter because you don't really care about charge efficiency. You just need to charge it up as fast as you can. When you charge it with a cigarette lighter adapter, it can handle 240 watts, okay? And that's great, that's very fast, that's awesome. But most cars, cigarette lighter adapters are limited to 10 amps which is going to be 120 watts coming out. There's cigarette lighter adapter. If this can input 240 watts, but your car can only give you 120 watts, you're only going getting half. So you have to keep that in mind. If you wanna charge this quickly with the high input through your alternator, you're going to have to add a wire that goes straight from your alternator or your battery that goes through the firewall of your vehicle and you can attach it directly to here. You can look that up, battery isolators are another option, and, and all of those things work great. But just keep that in mind, if you plug it in with the cigarette lighter adapter, you're not gonna get 240 watts. So if you wanna attach some solar panels that are very, very far away, you just need to buy an extension cord. Also keep in mind, you are parallel connecting with this, okay, because it cannot handle higher voltage. You cannot serious connect the solar panels. So that means that when you parallel connect, you are carrying a lot more amps, so you need 10 possibly eight gauge solar panel wires so that you do not have much loss. If you use 12 gauge MC4 connector cables with this and you parallel connect all of your panels and your solar panels are 50 feet away, you're going to have some huge losses. That is a lot of heat generation. So keep that in mind. Use very thick gauge wires when you connect solar panels. If you have 200 watts of panels, you can easily use 12 gauge. Even if it's far away, that's, that's not hard to do. If you're doing 600 watts of panels or 500 watts, you need to get eight or 10 gauge no matter what. And if it's far away, make it thicker and thicker. Something else I like about the Energy Kodiak is these cigarette lighter ports. They are always live and they can discharge 15 amps. Most of the other competitors only discharge about four to six amps. So that's pretty awesome because if you wanna charge a laptop efficiently, you can easily plug in a DC to DC converter or a cigarette lighter laptop charger available on Amazon. And you can charge it efficiently because if you use the inverter all the time, you're gonna use more power. And if you have a laptop charger, you're going to have more losses. So it's much better to buy a laptop charger that plugs into this port if you're gonna be using a laptop all day long, which a lot of people in mobile application, solar power off-grid, scenarios require the most efficient laptop and charging possible. The one thing that you have to get down with the Energy Kodiak specifically is that you cannot serious connect your panels. That means that you have to put them all in parallel because it cannot handle a very high voltage. The highest voltage that you can put through this is 30 volts. Most panels are 20 volts. If you put two of them in series, it will be 40 volts and you will damage the Kodiak. So if you buy one of these, make sure that you buy a branch connector for MC4 connectors, and then you can put all of your solar panels in parallel, and then you just plug it in the side, and you are done, and that's it. I was gonna have this temporarily just for the review, but I think I'm keeping it because <laughs> it's kind of life-changing. I mean, I have power anytime. I can plug in any solar panels. I can see what's going on with the stats on the front of this panel and I like it, it's really cool. The thing that you need to realize if you buy the Kodiak is these terminals are always live. These are the ones that you connect to the sealed lead acid batteries. So if you have these exposed and they touch something metal, you'll have a huge short circuit and you could probably damage the Kodiak. So make sure that you put these terminal covers on it and if you connect batteries, you should probably put a fuse because these are live all the time. This is a multi-use cigarette lighter adapter. So I put an XT60 connector on it. So if I plug it in right here, I can plug it into anything that I have that's XT60 compatible, such as these little lights, just like that, which is great. And I can also use it to charge the Kodiak. 
And this was a very cheap, I mean, this was $4 to buy this, and then I added an XT60 connector. And if you want this so you can charge the Kodiak, it's another couple of dollars. This was $1.50 at Fry's. You don't have to build this, and you really don't need all of this stuff. Over 90% of the power that this thing uses is through the solar panels, because I don't drive a whole lot. I mean, I do, and if the battery's really low and I need to microwave something, I'm gonna plug this one in, or maybe this one but most of the time the solar power does it. And with 200 watts during the summer, I can power my microwave and everything else that I need. And look how tiny this thing is. Check it out. I mean, the fact that this is replacing 200 pounds of battery from my old RV and it's like my hand can fit, <laughs> it's so small. I love these things, it's amazing. So it's a bummer that the Kodiak cannot deliver its continuous rated inverter wattage and we ran it at 1300 watts it's rated for 1500 it cuts out at four and a half minutes when the battery is at half but this is actually very common with most inverters a lot of inverters do this and if you have, think about the battery size nobody's going to be running a microwave for more than 10 to 15 minutes at a time if you are planning to use the kodiak with an air conditioner you can't unless you plan to run it for 10 minutes at a time. And I don't think anybody's going to do that. So this is the largest fault point that I have found with the Kodiak. It cannot deliver the wattage that is advertised. And if somebody can prove me wrong and show me what I'm doing wrong, I would love to hear it. I've done it with a full battery. I've done it with half of a battery. I've done it different ambient temperatures and it's the same. I get four and a half minutes, typically sometimes three minutes when the battery is at half when the battery's full, I can get 10 minutes out of it with a 1300 watt load. If I ran a 1500 watt load, which the most is that I've done running all of my appliances is 1400 watts, it cuts out pretty quickly. And I don't think that that's acceptable, but in the world of inverters, I found that most inverters are like this. If you buy um, a Chinese one or an American or German made one on Amazon, they have never been actually to the rated wattage. They usually cut out. Either they'll drop the voltage of your battery bank so significantly that it cuts itself off and it says, oh no, there's not enough battery juice. And so a lot of people, what they do is get a thicker gauge wire, they make the wire shorter and they up the cooling and usually they can get the rated wattage but I've not seen many inverters that get a rated wattage output um, just you know, without anything special, except for the Xantrex. I had a Xantrex, it was rated for 2000 watts. I was pulling 1500 to 1700 continuous for like half an hour sometimes. It worked magically, it was awesome. But the Xantrex costs a lot of money. But I think that a lot of the commercially sold ones are also going to give off their rated watt capacity. But not with this one, the Kodiak cannot do 1500 watt rated current and in, instead I would say to be around nine to 900 to 1000 watts continuous. Something else that I dislike about the Kodiak and every single solar generator on the market currently is that you cannot have series panel connections. And that is kind of a bummer. Most MPPT charge controllers can handle 70 up to 100 volts. And most of these solar generators can only handle like 20 volts. I mean, the Kodiak can handle 30 volts, but come on. And the reason why is because that they're using a DC to DC converter and not a true MPPT. MPPT loves to have the higher voltages and it, it can work with them because it's doing some interesting things with AC so you don't have to worry too much about the voltage. When you're doing DC to DC converters, having an excessively high voltage is going to mess up the conversion rate. And so if you're trying to make 100 volts drop down to 12 volts, it's going to be very difficult and will give off a lot of heat. I did that with my unicycle DC to DC buck converter in that tutorial and it gave off a lot of heat and the efficiency was not that great because I was making 12 volts all the way up to 60 something volts. It was like 67 volts. So you have efficiency losses. So I think that all solar generators need to have a true MPPT and a higher voltage voltage input. Every single solar generator I've seen on the market with MPPT has a very low input still. It's like 20 volts. So they're using cheap MPPTs. I do not like that. They're very tiny. Usually 10 amp is the max for those. So that's what I want to see is a larger voltage input MPPT solar generator. I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. The Kodiak costs more than other options. It's $1,800, $1,900. And I don't want to sound like a salesman, but if you do the math, it is technically cheaper than the other options. So let's take into consideration my old 
RV, 600 watt solar and 310 amp hour battery bank. It was sealed lead acid V max. And so let's, let's think about the cost of that. They're about 250 each, so 500 for both of them. You put them in parallel, they're both 12 volts, and you get about a usable amp hour rating of around 90 amp hours, which is the same as the Kodiak. So we spent $500 for that battery, but it only has charge cycles one fourth that of the Kodiak. So that means that the Kodiak will last four times as long with the same amount of performance. So that means that for the same cost of $2,000 of sealed lead acids, you can do the same as the Kodiak. So with just the battery alone, it makes it cheaper than all other options, the Kodiak. But now let's add something. We need to add an MPPT charge controller to those sealed lead acids. It's going to be about $200, $250. Now let's add the inverter. The Kodiak comes with the inverter and charge controller. Now let's add an inverter to our sealed lead acid. You're spending about $300 to $400 for, unless you get a Chinese one, all right, or if you get modified sine wave. The Kodiak has a pure sine wave, so I'm using $300 to $400 as a comparable price range. So let's say we spend $300, let's be safe on the safe side, and we spend $200 for the solar charge controller. We get one on sale, so that's another $500. That means we're up to $2,500, and we haven't even wired everything up. We don't have the fuses, we don't have the converters for the USB, we don't have any of the other stuff we don't have more plugs so it just just with the battery alone makes it cheaper than building your own system with sealed lead acid but let's think about this even deeper the Kodiak is like this big okay it's 20 pounds if you build your own system it's gonna be about 200 pounds because it's about 180 pounds for the batteries 90 pounds each 180 and then the uh, inverters that size with pure sine wave Xantrex is about 20 pounds so we're looking at 200 pounds compared to 20 pounds so it's cheaper it's lighter it's smaller it's more efficient it is better in every single way and it took me a while to realize this also let's change this equation and let's think about lithium iron phosphate they can get 4,000 5,000 charge cycles depending on the battery management system and how they're used in the ambient temperature mind you they are around $1,300 you can find the cheap one it's $900 it's a battle born battery that's the the name of the company that makes the battery it's 90 amp hours and that one's only 900 bucks so you could say $900 for the battery and you get more charge charge cycles than the Kodiak but you still have to buy the inverter and everything else so you could swing it that way and it would be comparable to the Kodiak and I actually sell those batteries on my website because they are phenomenal so if you think about this though lithium is cheaper than lead acid in the long run but let's say you're just a hobbyist and you have a little cabin and you're only there for a couple weeks at a time or you only need to charge up a laptop a sealed lead acid is still a, a phenomenal option for some of you guys that's a great option so you guys also have to think about how much you're using this sure lithium is cheaper but it has a higher initial cost if you don't want to spend two thousand dollars you might think oh that's ridiculous i could buy five hundred dollars worth of batteries and I'll be fine but if you're actually using it for years you will save yourself a lot of time and money if you buy lithium so I want you guys to understand that the Kodiak is cheaper than building your own system at home and it's probably more powerful especially with the pure sine wave inverter that's great you can hook up heated blankets you can hook up computers TVs it's awesome so it depends on what you're using this for if you're going for the long term and you want something that will work for a long time get the Kodiak if you need something small just for short small stuff then get a sealed lead acid suggestion for energy the brand that makes Kodiak is to make other models. I love the one kilowatt hour battery size with the Kodiak, but I would really love to see a 500 watt hour and maybe a 2000 watt hour, like different sizes because they accomplish different tasks. Some people in vans are not going to ever run a microwave, all right? I mean, the Kodiak is kind of like overkill. Like for me, if I don't run my microwave, I have unlimited electricity. I can run my laptop for weeks. I can run these lights for months, like on a single charge, like it's phenomenal. But most people don't need that much power. So we need to see smaller solar generators that are still lithium battery based because I've seen a lot of Goal Zeros in other companies 
and they have smaller ones with lead acid and they're not good you can't power you can power your laptop like five times like i mean that's okay okay for most people but if you have that size of discharge capability for the battery you need to be able to charge it quickly and a lot of the smaller solar generators do not have a fast charge rate they take like 30 hours to charge if you plug it into your cigarette lighter adapter who in the world is driving their car for 30 hours. That's ridiculous, you have to be realistic. So I wanna see smaller solar generators that can charge faster. That would be so phenomenal. I would buy one in a heartbeat, they would be seven pounds, it would be great, but you guys need to spend more money on the battery management system in the higher charge and higher discharge rate battery management systems. That is the big part that people don't like to spend a lot. With the Kodiak, it is the largest that I've seen on the market. The fact that it can take how much electricity in at the efficiency that it can do it at is phenomenal, and that's why I bought it. I bought it with my own cash because it is the best on the market right now. If you look at other ones, it still takes like 12 to 30 hours. The Kodiak can recharge in idealistic state in a couple hours. That is insane. That's awesome. That's what we want. We want the temperature regulation. We want the fast charge and discharge rate. And the Kodiak has that. But most solar generators do not. And if I could find a Kodiak that was a 500 watt hour model, I would love it and I am sure that everybody else in the RV world would buy it too. So that's what I want to see in the future. Another thing that I dislike about the Kodiak is the fact that I can't see how many watts are coming through the solar charge port. That would be so nice. I actually bought an amp meter and it's coming in the mail right now so I can calculate it for my own. But most people don't want to do that. They don't want to bust out the calculator and figure out the wattage of their solar panels. They don't know, they don't care, and they shouldn't have to care. So I would love to see another LCD screen on the Kodiak that shows the wattage that's coming in and it wouldn't matter which port it's coming from whether it's the small port that can only handle 10 amps from your cigarette lighter adapter or the large port that can handle 600 watts so that's what I want to see in future models if you guys can is another LCD screen that shows you the wattage coming in and that that would be phenomenal that'd be great the thing that I like and kind of dislike about the Kodiak is that it can only charge through one input port at a time so you have two ports and you can charge one with solar panels and the other with the cigarette lighter adapter. So that means you can leave it plugged into your solar panels all the time and the cigarette lighter adapter, and it makes it nice. You don't wanna sit there and unplug and plug every time you drive, that's ridiculous. So I really like how they have two ports, but it's a bummer that it can't charge with both ports simultaneously. I emailed the company and they said that it can charge with one port at a time. And I'm still not sure if it chooses the larger port or the smaller port or how it modulates that. Does it have more wattage from one port and says, okay, we're gonna take this electricity or how does it do that? I would love to know more. So it's great, but I think that they should have two charge circuits. I understand how they designed it and how it works. So I understand what they're doing and why they did it that way. And you have to have it separate because you have an 18 volts coming in from the panels. You have 12 volts that's coming in from your alternator or technically 14.5 volts. So I understand, but it would be really nice if you guys could figure out a way so they could charge simultaneously with your car alternator and through the solar panels. That would be great. All in all, the Kodiak, in my opinion, is the best solar generator. And I really mean that. I spent my own money doing this. I know I make a lot of reviews, but these are honest reviews. And I like the Kodiak just for the fact that you can put 400 to 600 watts of solar panels on it. Nobody else can do that. If, if you can find one, please show it to me. Everything else takes like 30 hours to charge. The Kodiak can do it in five hours. I like it and also the price with the lithium ion where you get 2000 charge cycles that it's rated for is awesome. The warranty is awesome. They also have a no lemon policy. So if something falters early on, they will fix it. And they're really cool guys there. I really like that. I think that somebody is going to make a better one soon here. Lithium cells are getting cheaper. This technology is getting easier to produce. Produce. MPPT charge controllers are getting easier to produce. And I think that somebody's going to make a water-cooled lithium cell battery bank. It's, it's coming, okay? In the next five years, we're going to see this. Thank you so much for watching my video review. Let me know in the comment section if you have any further questions or something that I didn't touch on in the video. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.